Hi, everyone. Welcome to how co-parenting apps help the practitioners manage their child custody cases. My name is Kendra Thomas. I'm co-chair of the Family Law Section, and I am exceptionally excited to present this program today and to thank our family wizard for being a loyal and very, very dedicated sponsor to our Family Law Section. Today, at the completion of the program, you will receive your credit and your certificate for our participation. Please print it out for your records. I would also like to highlight for you two programs that we have coming up that we hope you'll attend. Tomorrow night, we have What's New in Department 2 featuring Judge Pelman, who will take us on a discussion of insights and thoughts from Department 2. And I also hope you'll join us on March 2nd for direct examination with Dan and Lauren as they interview Judge Pellman, which I'm sure will be an amazing episode to catch. Now, on with our show. Let me turn the stage over to everyone over at Our Family Wizard. Well, hello there. This is Andrew. Uh, oh. Uh, thanks, Kendra. Yes. Hi. Hi, I'm Kevin Mooney. Uh, uh, I probably know many of you. And uh, where this, uh, and I got working here with Matt Haverbold on this program. And where this came out of was, uh, some of you may remember when uh, Carrie Pines and I were teaching electronic discovery up and down California. And we did that for a few years. And during that process of teaching electronic discovery and ESI, electronically stored information, we were bringing in other products or other services that were family law related that that stored information electronically so that we could see and show how those services worked. And one of the things Carrie and I were really trying to do was get people to stipulate the things that made the process easier, made, made the, the process in the office easier, made it easier between the clients. Uh, we, you know, we talked about stipulations on discovery that you put in place at the beginning of a case. And as we, the more and more we worked with our family wizard, because they were doing programs with us and Matt was the, the primary one who would appear with us, it, it started to occur to us that these programs really uh, provide a wonderful tool to help manage the case itself. And if parties were to, st and, and, and then as I got more and more further into it, I started to, I partnered with our family resident directly uh, because I realized that if parties were to stipulate to the use of our family wizard at the beginning of a case, all of their custody information would be segregated. It would separate it from their financial information. It would separate it from anything else in their case. And because in family law, it's, the, it's, it's, not, an, it's not a moment in time. It's something that happens continually throughout the case. Evidence is being produced throughout the case. We've all had our clients sitting at counsel table texting each other. And so, uh, but if all that was segregated into one spot into like an our family wizard platform into one of the other platforms it could be talking parents it could be co co-parent or it could be one of the other apps as well uh, i'm talking about it with our family wizard because that's not only who i'm working with but because they have the best platform to do what i'm trying to encourage uh, people to do it will reduce the conflict in your case it'll reduce the people calling your office for for issues as you'll see as we go through the features it will uh, re it will reduce your return trips to court it will save money it will allow you to get back to practicing law and not having to manage your client as much um, we'll uh, as we go through the uh, uh, the different features of the platform and that's how we're going to present it I'm going to have Matt present features in the platform and then I'm going to explain how we've used those uh, to help manage the case and help uh, 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 get parties to a resolution without as much conflict because one of the things that we realized was the biggest thing that's causing that conflict is that uh, anxiety that happens uh, between the clients because they're not getting uh, returned uh, calls from the op from your office as fast as they, they think they should they're not being able to retrieve information from the other party as they as fast as they think they should and the anxiety increases they call your office Next thing we know, we're headed to court because someone didn't return an, a lunchbox or a nebulizer, both of which I've been to court on, um, unfortunately, and, and those type of things. So we're, we're going to jump right in. I'm going to have, oh, we're going to have uh, Matt do that. But right off the bat, let me explain something. One of the first questions I get, we get almost every time is about the pricing because they'll say our family wizard has a, has a, a yearly fee and some of the other apps are, are free or, or claim to be free or whatever it is. So we do have in the materials. A, uh, a comparison chart between Our Family Wizard and Talking Parents. And I'm sure if you just go through the chart for yourself, you'll find that not only is Our Family Wizard a, a more complete program with more features, but it's also a better value 
uh, once you actually look at the charges that uh, uh, come across on, on, on at least this other platform. We have these for other uh, platforms as well, but Talking Parents is the main other one that's used here in Los Angeles and, and surrounding areas. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Matt to start off with just a little bit of background on Family Wizard, and then we're gonna jump into the features. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, so <clears throat> just really briefly on the, the background, I know many people on the uh, Zoom uh, webinar today are, you know, familiar with our family wizard have probably had cases where their clients were, were using our family wizard either through a court order or through an agreement. But OFW has been around for uh, just over 20 years now. We actually launched as a pilot project back in the year 2000 and into 2001. The quote on the screen here is a quote from Judge James Swenson, who was the supervising family law judge in Hennepin County, Minnesota, which is where the pilot project was done. And their goal with doing the, the pilot project was to really focus on creating a set of tools for parents to work out parenting issues outside of court. So a lot of the issues that were bringing parents in post decree, you know, uh, disputes over timelines of when information was received, disputes over unreimbursed medical expenses, time modification requests, the common pain points that you see frequently in your family law custody cases. We tried to build the platform around those with guidance from the court and from the family law practitioners that we worked with to really build the tool set to help the clients go out there and be parents together once the case is over uh, and hopefully reduce unnecessary conflict in the future, bringing them back to court. And that was actually the metric that was used during the pilot project was to reduce repeat visits to court post decree. So the families that were on the pilot project, they measured the amount of times that they came back to court and the part of the quote that I'll highlight here from Judge James Swenson is that what they found back then in 2000, 2001 was that regular use of the program should substantially reduce the need to come back to court. But then more importantly, it helps reduce that level of animosity, which ultimately ends up being harmful to the children. And uh, Kevin did mention price. Uh, Our Family Wizard is a subscription-based service for your clients. It's going to start out at $100 a year for an annual Our Family Wizard subscription. We have some additional packages that can be purchased as well. Uh, we just came out with a new premium edition, which allows the parties to actually transfer money to reimburse each other through the app directly. Uh, but that $99 a year is still our base price. And that's for each parent. We do have a fee waiver program, which I have a slide uh, later on in the, in the PowerPoint here that we'll, we'll go into more detail on that specifically. But anyone who has uh, pro bono or low bono clients, we're gonna be completely free for those folks. Essentially, any parents that would qualify for a court fee waiver uh, or certain government benefits like CalWORKs, CalFresh, or who are working with legal aid or pro bono uh, representation, our family was it's completely free for those folks with that fee waiver program. But just to give a quick preview, uh, our family wizard, it's a subscription based service, as I mentioned, once a parent creates their account, they can log into it from anywhere with uh, inter internet connection, they don't need to download any software onto their computer. And then everything's available in mobile apps, which are completely free. So most parents are going to download the Our Family Wizard app onto their iPhone or their Android and use the platform to communicate with the other party that way. And then as far as the features go, we're going to go through these one at a time, but just to sort of preview them, it's a complete suite of tools. Uh, most people think of co-parenting apps as a messaging platform, which is probably the primary, primary function that we're all familiar with. But, but in addition to that, there's a shared calendar for their parenting time. There's an information bank for uploading documents and files. There's an expense log for posting receipts and requesting reimbursement. We have a journal feature, which has a GPS check-in feature associated with it. And then professional access, which is a feature that really separates our family wizard from other co-parenting platforms. And Kevin's gonna talk a lot about that as we go through the features here, but that's actually a free account for family law practitioners, for the attorneys, for minors counsel, for the mental health professionals involved in the case. It's a way for them to link up with the parties that they're working with to manage the case. And that's what the bulk of Kevin's talking points are gonna be focusing on today. But moving away from the iPhone, um, this is what it looks like when a parent signs in on a computer. On the left-hand side, there's a, a field here uh, labeled last viewed. This is gonna show each time, uh, the last time that each parent has signed into their Our Family Wizard account. And this is a great example to illustrate how Our Family Wizard is a highly documented system. Our overall goal is to help keep these parents out of court, but at the end of the day, we know that disputes arise and we understand the importance, not only for the parents, but for the court and the professionals involved to have accurate records that are maintained indefinitely that can never be manipulated, edited, or deleted. So a good example of that is this last viewed field. It shows the last time that each parent has signed into their account. 
And then all the other features throughout the platform are also going to have this last viewed field. So you know the last time a parent viewed information on the calendar, uh, the last time they looked at the expenses, for examples. And just real quickly, there's no need for anybody to take notes during this because anything you want to know uh, can be found by co either contacting us afterwards or uh, reaching out to the support line at OFW. They will uh, explain anything to you. They'll walk you through setting up of accounts. They'll help you. Uh, they'll help your clients set their accounts up. They'll teach you how to use the system if there's any questions. So don't feel like you need to write everything down as we're going through this. Exactly. It, it's, it's good for you to understand what's available for your clients if they're going to be using a program like our Family Wizard. Uh, it's good for you to have the understanding of what's there. But yeah, by no means do you need to be the expert. We do have a dedicated customer support team uh, that's available by phone and email seven days a week for your clients to call. Uh, the notifications window that is highlighted here, uh, parents are always alerted in real time. So all the communication and the sharing of information on our family wizard is in real time. So if I send a message to uh, my co-parent, they're going to get an alert on their phone that uh, notifies them of that new message. They can log in and see that new message right away. Same as if I were to post a new event to the calendar, the other parent has the ability to go in and see that new information immediately. And then on their home screen, whether it's on the iPhone, Android, or on a computer, when you sign into your account, the very first thing you see is if you have any new messages, any new events on the calendar. Uh, we don't want parents to miss new information. And so they're immediately prompted with it uh, upon logging into their accounts. And they can click these hyperlinks to go directly to those new items. And then as I mentioned, the apps are completely free. So once they have an account, there's no additional cost to have it on their smartphone. A lot of the, uh, the free co-parenting platforms, the way that they make money is they'll charge you for different things here and there. And a big one of those is having the ability to, to download it on, on, as an app on your iPhone. Our Family Wizard, the app's included, and we see like something around 80, 85% of all sign-ins are actually from a mobile phone app. And as, Matt, go mentioned, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. as Matt, Matt mentioned the professional account, that's really where we're gonna be spending a lot of the time um, because that's one of the things that, that we found is, is uh, you, maybe you have a paralegal go on and learn how to do this for you. So they can go on and download reports. They can go on and, and check activity of your clients or, or you can go on and check activity of your clients, but that pro account is gonna be key uh, to, to helping to manage the case uh, through our family wizard. And the nice that, I, that we know of, we're the only platform that has a pro professional access account. And that account does not in any way contaminate the information in the system. Uh, what the system will show when we print out the information is just the client's activities, not when the attorney signed in and out, not when the attorney downloaded a, a report, not when the attorney looked at a message. That is not seen by anybody else and doesn't come out in the reports that, that are printed. So it's an interest, it's a, it's a very valuable feature to have the professional access. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was talking about the high level of documentation that really pertains to the family, to the parents. The professional account, the, the, your activity as a the professional logging in is not documented, not recorded. More importantly, it doesn't have the ability to corrupt the data or move something or accidentally delete something or change a message from on red to red, for example. And speaking of messages, uh, so I, we're gonna go through feature by feature. We're gonna focus on messages first, but this is what an Our Family Wizard message looks like that's been sent on an, on an iPhone device. So we have a message from John Smith to Mary Smith. Uh, the subject is the school trip announcement. Messaging on Our Family Wizard is very similar to texting or emailing from your phone. You can also include attachments. In this example here, there are two attachments. There's a school trip announcement. There's also a permission slip. If you're on your computer, the exact same process is adding an attachment to an email. If you're on your phone, you can upload a file that you may have saved to your phone, but you can actually use the camera on your phone to take photos. So for parents that don't have access to a computer or a scanner, uh, they can actually upload attachments by using the app on their phone and taking photos with the, their iPhone or Android uh, camera. So in this example, we have John Smith who's sending a message to Mary Smith about a school trip. Uh, just to kind of expand on some of the detail here, one of the important aspects of our family wizard is that all messages can never be edited or deleted after they've been sent, but also all messages will include a red receipt to show when the message was first viewed by the other parent. So in this example, John Smith sends a message to Mary, uh, April 12th at 9.47 a.m. You can see that Mary Smith viewed that message that same day at 9.51 a.m. Messages that haven't been opened, it's gonna be very clearly indicated as never viewed in that field. So you have that documentation that's gonna hopefully cut out unnecessary disputes over your timelines for when information was received or when somebody had access to it. But also for the parents, it helps with building trust and sort of that peace of mind of knowing that they have the information. So for example, John Smith doesn't have to question whether Mary Smith has the school trip announcement or this permission slip. He can verify on his own when she actually did have access to view it. 
And this is where it starts to come in, where it starts to help manage your case, because we've all had those cases where the, where the client calls our office and says, um, I never received that message. Uh, they didn't answer my message. And so these let you know right away, you can go into the system, check the information, see if the message has been read, see if it hasn't been read, see what the response is. And this is the very first a step in starting to manage the case, but this is the the least of the of the of the nice features that it has. The tone meter is one of the best, which Matt's about to tell you about. Yeah, so we have an optional feature on our message board called Tone Meter. The easiest way for me to explain Tone Meter is it's basically an emotional spell check for your tone as you're writing messages. So for your clients when they're communicating with the other side, as they're typing their messages, Tone Meter is analyzing the contents of that message and looking for emotionally charged or inflammatory language. Uh, if it does catch any uh, emotionally charged or inflammatory language, tone meter will flag it and then immediately bring it to their attention as they're typing. And in this example here, we've got three things that the tone meter has flagged. I, I know you'll say it's not your fault, it's aggressive, don't be late as usual, humiliating, can you at least manage that as upsetting. Tone meter is gonna catch your more obvious things, your, your name calling, your swearing, your deliberate, you know, kind of attacking communication. But I like the examples here because they're really passive aggressive. Don't be late as usual. The parent that's writing that, they might not necessarily be trying to upset the other parent. They just want them to be on time because maybe there's been issues in the past. But you know, things are emotional based on the context of their relationship. Don't be late as usual. It could be enough to send things from bad to worse. And and this is this is one of the ones that I was using when I uh, with some of my clients because it was the actually the most valuable. I had several clients, and you may have the same, that you rewrite all of their emails. They're not allowed to send an email to the other side or a text before they sent it through your office so you can make sure that they're not being hostile. They're not being humiliating or upsetting. And they're, you know, just so that they're communicating well. And actually what we found in surveying people uh, and attorneys is the more their clients use this feature, the less their clients can have to be watched over in their communications because they learn as they go how to pull back and how to not be aggressive, not be humiliating, not be upsetting. And we've all had the clients where they bring you the message and you read it and they say, look what they wrote to me. And we, we read the message and say, that looks fine to us. Well, it's because of that keyed up nature that they have and because some of their communications are aggressive and they see something in there from the other side and they think it's uh, abusive, humiliating, whatever it is. And so again, the better and faster we can teach them how to communicate kindly as much as anything else, the, the faster we can get back to practicing law and stop managing that piece of the case or spending that much money on rewriting emails and monitoring their actual communications. And that's what I found very valuable. And we found that uh, uh, with uh, some of the parenting plan coordinators who've been using this and some of the mediators who've been using this, we get the same uh, response from them as well. So a fantastic feature. Right, because back to the messages, once an Our Family Wizard message has been sent, it can't be taken back. You can't change it afterwards. Our customer support team gets the phone call every day. Hey, I sent a message I wish I hadn't. How do we take it back? And unfortunately, or fortunately, there is no way to take that message back. So that tone meter is a great way to sort of give them a moment to kind of cool down, think twice, maybe change the phrasing of their message before they do click that send button. Because all messages on Our Family Wizard are maintained on a permanent record that can always be downloaded into a PDF. Uh, the parties can download their own PDFs, so it's a great tool for self-represented uh, parents because they have their own ability to keep their own record and, and download those records into PDFs. But uh, Kevin, I'll let you talk a little bit about how you use the reporting feature uh, with that professional access as an attorney or as a practitioner. Absolutely. And this was where we actually started bringing uh, Matt into our ESI discussions because you know, all email has metadata in the background. It's going to have additional information. Metadata is the what, where, who, what, where, when of the information. And it's, it's all that background data that you don't see in a normal email. And so our family wizard brings it forward and prints it on the page for you so you can see it clearly, but not just so you can see it clearly, but we've all attached uh, 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 pages and pages of emails and you have to flip through and see what the response was, you know, what the, what the reply was, the new email that came back. And what's great about our family wizard is you can, you can synthesize these down into a report and the reports can be designed as you want them to be. And they can be time limited from this time to that time. They can be focused on a specific subject. You can just have them subject related. And so you don't get the giant dumps of downloads that you might get from some of the other platforms. And it makes it very easy to present the information for the judge to see the information in a very quick way where you know who it was sent from, when it was sent, when the other side got it, when they opened it, when they opened the attachment that was attached to it, and when they replied to it. All very 
important information for reducing conflict, reducing anxiety, and again, letting you get back to practice law. Yep, and just to highlight a couple of things on the reports, all, all of our PDFs are gonna come on our, our Family Wizard letterhead. They're always gonna show you who created the report, the date and time that it was created, and what the time zone that the information is actually presented in is in. Um, in, in addition. And then just a, a quick housekeeping thing for people that have questions, uh, please take advantage of either the chat or the Q&A feature on Zoom. And uh, at the end of our PowerPoint here, we'll go through and answer any questions that we didn't uh, already address during the presentation. And every page of the report is going to have the Our Family Wizard logo on, logo on it. That's something that, you know, Carrie Pines actually called Our Family Wizard and said, hey, can you add the logo to every page so that for authentication purposes, we can, there's no question which page is which. It, 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 we tried to insert something else in there. And so Our Family Wizard, because they work with the attorneys and they're trying to make this a better platform for management of cases as well, added the logo to every page. And so that was something that uh, we found very helpful as well. Absolutely. So moving from the, the messaging feature, we'll talk about the Our Family Wizard calendar. And the first thing we'll, we'll highlight here is the parenting schedule, which went through a recent update uh, to where we actually introduced uh, templates for your common parenting time rotations that, you know, your 223, 2255, we have a multitude of different templates available for the parents to select from based on what's in their court order or what's in their agreement. They can also just build a truly customizable schedule from scratch if they have a more complicated schedule that doesn't fit into any of these uh, common rotations. Uh, it's a color-coded parenting time representation essentially on their calendar. It's gonna show which parent has the children for which days. Uh, so you would start out here by selecting uh, either a template that uh, applies to your specific schedule, or you'd be building a custom one from scratch. For the days that there's exchanges, you can even specify the time that the exchange is going to take place, and that will be indicated on the calendar. And then here's a monthly view for a parent. It's just, again, a really easy to understand, uh, easy to digest, color-coded representation of your time. And then in addition to their parenting schedule, they can also go in and uh, assign the holidays. They can create as many custom holidays as they need to, but based on what's in their order or their agreement, they can indicate which parent has responsibility for any given holiday, and that will override that color coding with your parenting schedule. You can even download uh, your yearly calendar into a PDF uh, or, or print it as needed. It's just a really nice reference to understand what days you have the children. And from a case management standpoint, if you're trying to show the court another, uh, another option, you can you can do a sample calendar. We can set you up and you can do a sample calendar where you can say, this is what the calendar looks like now. This is what, I, what my client's asking for. This is what it's gonna look like if the court grants that request. And you can attach those side by side so the court can see what they are and get an idea of what the changes are gonna be within the schedule. Very helpful. Yeah, absolutely. And with that professional access uh, account, we have parenting coordinators, special masters, uh, you know, some mental health professionals that are working with the parties uh, in a neutral sort of role. They can actually use the calendar tool on our family wizard with that professional account to go through hypothetical parenting schedules to get you that kind of visual of this is if we were to go with this schedule this is what it would look like on a yearly basis or a monthly basis you know it's basically the equivalent of the the whiteboards or the uh, the marker boards or like big white pieces of paper that you're flipping through kind of going through the different uh, parenting uh, schedule schedules i should say uh, one of the more valuable features on our family wizard is the trade request tool and this is something that came about from the very beginning from the, the judge that we worked with during our pilot project who was seeing so many families coming back to court for time modification requests. He was really insistent that we had a tool specifically designed that would allow the parents to, to work out one-time changes to their parenting schedule without the need for a lot of back and forth dialogue. So in a way, the trade request tool is a way for the parents to trade days without having to talk about it uh, because we have a form that is able that a parent is able to use to submit that request. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like here. So with the trade request, it's all required fields. We built this so that they can't leave out any information intentionally or unintentionally or be ambiguous with the request. And the first thing I need to do is provide a reason for why they're making the request to, to make a change to the schedule. In this example here, there's some family in town that want to see the child. You're then going to indicate what the, the dates and times are for the change that you're requesting to make. You're indicating if you're requesting to take responsibility or give responsibility. And then you have the option to propose it as a trade. So rather than just taking time, you can offer up time in exchange for what you're asking. That way it's a more amicable request. It also helps keep the balance with the parenting time so that one parent doesn't end up with more or less time because of these, these, these trade requests. And going back through the data and the history of our family wizard, looking at all the trade requests that were ever sent throughout the years, 
the majority of them are almost always, they're almost always trades. So it's not just a parent asking to take time, they're always offering up time in exchange for their request. Once a trade request is submitted, the other parent receives a notification. They get to see the details of that request and they can either approve it, refuse it, or basically counter offer. If maybe they are okay with the idea, but the date and time don't exactly work, they can send it back with an alternative suggestion for that original parent to view, who can then approve it, refuse it, or even send it back again. So it's essentially a way for them to negotiate changes to their parenting time. When they do reach an agreement, their calendar automatically updates. So once they've agreed to it, not only do you have that documentation of the agreement, but then the calendar is gonna change and that color coding is gonna to update to reflect the new time based on that agreement. And then all parenting uh, trade requests are kept on a record as well. So you're always gonna have a history of the requests that are being made and how they're being responded to or not responded to. And for those ones that get approved, it's essentially a documented agreement that you have on file that can be referenced at any point that uh, memorializes the fact that they both agreed to make that one-time parenting change. And this is one of those very common pain points. And this is one, again, one of the very valuable features because uh, you know the client's calling your office to then switch time or emailing you then saying, we wanna switch these days. And then you're contacting the other attorney and they're contacting their client and they're going back and forth. Again, what using this platform and utilizing its features will require your clients to learn to communicate together and learn to teach them to parent together so they don't have to parent through you. And that's really the idea of what I'm trying to encourage with, with this, with using these type of platforms to help manage your case. Because again, this is a pain point. It's one of those points that raises the anxiety of the, of the, of the parties. And one of the interesting things about the report that you see on the screen now is it will say where the other side uh, rejected the uh, request or, or just said, or said no to it or, or if they agreed to it. And we've had those cases where the client says, you know, I've asked for 13 requests and they've denied every single one. Okay, well, you have a report of that now, if that's something you need to show to the court. Or, and, and maybe it's the other side won't stop making these requests. Maybe that's what you need to show to the court. But again, that's all gonna be documented. You ca they can't undo those documents. And they're very easy to print out in a report that, in the format that you want and, and, and then present to the court in a way that they can see very quickly without having to sift through a lot of information. And then very quickly, just like any other calendar, we have events uh, on the Our Family Wizard calendar. One of the benefits, though, to uh, the OFW calendar is that events can't be edited or deleted after they've happened. You also aren't able to backdate events, so you can't make it look like there was an event on the calendar uh, in the past that wasn't there. You can only schedule events out into the future. Unlike a Google calendar or a lot of the other free calendar options that are out there, you know, with those types of uh, shared calendars, anyone can, can go in and make changes or delete something or move something at any time. And there's no way to ever know kind of who did what. With our family wizard, you always have a documented record. So if I create an event and then I later change the start time for that event, not only is it the that uh, activity recorded on the record, but the other parents always notify too. So when I change the start time for the children's play rehearsal, the other parent gets a notification on their phone that I made that change. They can go in there and see that new information right away. And then you always have that documented history as well. Uh, one of the more convenient things for the parents on the events is they can specify which parents picking up and which, which parents dropping off. And that will actually color code those times when they're looking at it on the calendar. Check-ins, this is a relatively newer feature for our family wizard. And, and, one, of my, uh, and one of my favorite features too. And Matt, Matt will talk about it, but it's one of my favorite ones. Yeah, so I, I'm sure uh, a lot of you have had cases where there were disputes and issues over pickups and drop offs where one parent was either frequently late or being accused of being frequent, frequently late, maybe it was your client who was being wrongfully accused of not showing up on time or not showing up at all. Uh, and I've heard from practitioners and, and judges that there's a French fry order or a Starbucks order, but they would they would order that an exchange take place at a at a retail location where they could go in and buy a, a French fry or a coffee. Uh, some sort of small items that they would end up with a receipt that would have the address and then the date and time on it. Uh, this is our digital equivalent of that, uh, healthier and cheaper in the long run, hopefully. But what it is, is it uses the uh, location services on a smartphone, and it's a tool for a parent to check in when they're at scheduled pickups, drop-offs, or exchanges to document on the record that they where they're where they're supposed to be and when they're supposed to be there. It also notifies the other parent that they're there. And it's a great tool to really just cut out those unnecessary disputes over people not showing up on time or not uh, showing up at all. And it's only it's only active while the party's using it as the check-ins and they can turn off the, the feature as well, the GPS feature as well. But the, the important part about that is it's not tracking the 
the uh, uh, party the whole time. It's only for this. So we don't have to worry about it in DV cases. Or are we worried about them tracking the other side because it's constantly monitoring their location? And like, and Matt's very correct that the uh, French fry order, we, we've probably all done it. I know I've done it, had to have clients go in and get those uh, uh, receipts. But the other thing that check-ins is being used for is just uh, uh, parents dropping a kids off at soccer. They didn't need to check in, but they said, okay, you know, uh, Johnny's at soccer now. Here's the location. Here's the address. They can see, you know, it comes with the map. It, again, teaches the parents to work together, gets that anxiety down, gets the conflict removed, and has them stop contacting their office. Exactly. It's not just the accountability aspect, but it's also a great tr trust building tool. So if a parent's mm -hmm. going to be picking up a child and taking them to another location, the other parent doesn't have to have that anxiety or worry over whether or not they took them where they said they were going to. It's a tool that can be used to establish that trust as well as keep that record too of people being on time and where they're supposed to be. And as Kevin said, it's not a tracking tool. The only way it's ever going to record your location is if you actively click the button to check in. And it's just where you were at that moment in time. And there's also reporting built in for the check-in feature as well. So if there's been a, a history of check-ins on the account, uh, there's a PDF report that can be downloaded to show you all the details of those check-ins, including the locations and the dates and the times. Do you want to say anything more, Kevin, about the check-ins and, and how they've been helpful in your cases? Oh, well, it, it's, it's, the, it's the reports that I wanted to get to. But yeah, no, the check-ins de definitely helpful on my, my own cases. But and, and we also have, quite often, we have parties driving from distances and meeting in the middle. Uh, and so... Again, the check-ins help help with that feature, but the reporting on it is one of the things that I that I want to talk about because it makes it so you can go into and set, like I said, set the reports up like you want them to. And this is a really neat feature. Let me just, I'm going to jump in my mind ahead to, if you needed to subpoena information from our family wizard, you could go on that, you could go on the system or have your paralegal go on the system first and print the report as you would like to see it. Would you want to see it chronologically? Do you want to see it uh, listed event by event? Do you want to see it uh, limited in time? Do you want to see it limited by subject and see what it is uh, the, put the information in as you want to see it. When you get the report like you want to see it, now when you do your subpoena, you'll know exactly what you're going to get when it comes back. It's going to look exactly like the report that you printed out because that's what you asked for. You asked for a report from this time to this time printed chronologically. That's what you're going to receive. So you're never going to wonder when you open that envelope when you walk into court, what's inside? What are you going to be dealing with? You'll know the information up front. You can have analyzed it. You can be ready to present it. And, and, and save time, save frustration. You look like you're extremely on top of things in front of the court and for your client. And so again, it builds that confidence level in, the, in your client. It builds that confidence level from the court and it really helps you, uh, again, get back to practicing law and not managing a case. Thanks, Kevin. So moving into the information bank, I did just take a peek at the chat, the Q&A, and I saw that one of the questions was asking if there is a section on our family wizard for contacts information. Uh, that's going to be on the information bank here. So the information bank is essentially a repository for parents to upload files, documents, but also to share information such as emergency contacts. You'll see that there's a field down here for that. There's different templates that are preset where parents can go in and fill the information. So for example, family vitals something as simple as the clothing size, shoe size, uh, blood type. There's also a medical section where they can put the insurance cards uh, for reference here. So if a non-custodial parent is with the children and there's an incident, they need to go to the emergency room or the hospital, they have access to that insurance card information, the you know medication records, healthcare providers, immunizations. Um, it saves a phone call to the other parent, but it's also a good way to establish that the parents are sharing the information that they should both have access to. And how would you and, use the information bank in your cases, Kevin? Well, another valuable way I found to use it was I had clients who, before every hearing, they would call me to ask where the court was, what, you know, what the address was, where it was, where they're supposed to enter. And I used to have a set of emails for each client or a set of images for each uh, case where it had uh, uh, a Google map of the uh, courthouse area, uh, uh, a uh, arrow pointing to where the parking garage was, an arrow pointing to the front door of the building they were supposed to walk in. And I would send that to the clients beforehand because otherwise they would call my office and ask me all of that information. What I found is if they can, that information can be listed inside our family wizard. So the client doesn't call your office to find out that information. They just go in the system, say, oh, there's the address. Here's the information I needed to know. And they, and they don't have to 
interrupt you and you don't have to interrupt them. And they see you there on time in the right place in the right location and ready to go. So I, I think that that info bank is way underused by a lot of people. I had a client who really used it a lot and found it to be super, super helpful. So uh, that's one of the things I encourage uh, the attorneys or any other professionals to do is get their clients to utilize these features. You know, it's one of the hard things that we've seen happen. And, and we talked to a parenting plan coordinator last week who said, I require every client to be on our family wizard, but the problem I have is getting them to use the features. And, and what occurred to me is when I was practicing uh, and I had these cases come out, uh, if someone got ordered to use our family wizard, our talking parents on one of my cases, I saw that as a negative. I saw that as a, that I had failed. And I think I presented that to the client as well the same way. I would say, well, you know, it's too bad that this happened, but you're going to have to deal with it now. And we'll just make the, we'll make the best of it. And what I realized as we were going through these ESI things, learning about the program and then working with our family wizard directly, is that if I just changed my perspective, and said when it got ordered, or I would be asking for it now uh, proactively, but when it got ordered, even if it was something I hadn't asked for, my response to my client will be, oh no, this is a good thing. This is gonna help for all these following reasons. It's not just gonna document the information, but it's gonna make it so they can't change it. It's gonna make it so there's, there's no question about anything that happened. It's gonna make it so our evidence is easy to collect. It's gonna make it so our evidence is easy to produce. And we're gonna save money. We're gonna save time. Uh, we're gonna save trips to court. So. I would change the paradigm of how I present it so that the client has a better uh, reception of the program and then, and then really encourage them to use the system and to call the support line and say, okay, get me set up in this feature. How does this feature work? Help me set up this feature. Can you help me do, set up my calendar? They will walk you through setting up the calendar. All of those things so that you're not teaching your client how to use the program. Our family wizard is teaching them how to use the program. And the more they use it, the easier your life becomes. So I, and the info bank's just one of those places because again, it's that, it's that anxiety. When they say, I contacted the other side, I need to find out about these medical records. The child's school's asking about them or someone else is asking about them. The other side hasn't returned my call. It's already in the system. Open it up, get the information, no anxiety, move on. Yeah, absolutely. It's just all about, you know, helping these parents be parents together and reducing that unnecessary anxiety and that unnecessary conflict, but then helping the practitioners and the courts manage that information as well for their purposes. And with the information bank, I mentioned earlier that there's templates there for like healthcare, uh, for, for um, family vitals. There's also a general section called my files, which when Kevin was talking about how he would have his clients set up to where he would share the information with the courthouse, the parking, the, the entrances, that's what the my file section could be used for hypothetically. Any essentially any document or any file can be uploaded here uh, by the parents. And, 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 and did you ever have cases where you would yeah. ask for? Or, go ahead. Yeah, well, yeah, well, one of the things that you have them upload, you have them upload their custody order, you have them upload their judgment, you have them upload their uh, domestic violence restraining order. Again, I I can't tell you how many times a client would call me and say, um, I don't know who has who has Christmas this year because they had misplaced purposely or unpurposely or inadvertently, or just because their mental state couldn't deal with it, they had misplaced the documents. And so they'd call me that I'd have to go then pull their judgment, look through it, uh, go back and try to figure out, okay, who does have it this year? And then give them the information. And again, we spent all that time and money on those little issues. And so by uploading those documents, they're right at their fingertips. And when the other side has a question, they said, didn't our judgment say, oh, let's, let's look at it and see. Let's open it up and we'll see what it says. And then we can discuss that through our family wizard and go back and forth and have a documentation of this communication. And if there's a mistake, then we'll both know what it is. Or if now that there's still a question, now maybe we contact the attorneys, but the information is at their fingertips. So moving away from the information bank, we'll talk about expenses on OFW. So this is the expense log on our family wizard. It's a place for both parents to upload receipts, uh, keep a history of all the shared expenses for the children, and then request reimbursement from each other as well. On the example here, we're looking at it from a computer. You've got a series of different expenses that have been posted over time. You have the date that the expense is associated with, the title, the status, uh, and then the actual dollar amounts over here. And then if you scroll down to the bottom, our family wizard is always doing the math and keeping a running total of how much each parent has paid to date, what's been requested for reimbursement to date, what's outstanding, what's actually been reimbursed. 
And on the expenses, that's uh, um, that's one of the ones that it, it, this, there's an additional charge to, to be making expenses back and forth through our family wizard and uh, new accounts as they're signing up. But but the issue there is, uh, and again, if you're anything like me, you've had clients walk in for reimbursement claims and said, you know, here's the last three years of receipts. They owe me three thousand dollars, but it's taken this long for me to get to a number that I could bring to you that made sense to go to court. And then they hand you all the receipts and you go in and make an Excel spreadsheet and then you write a declaration. Well, at this point, what you have with our family wizard is not only are all the expenses listed there, but the parties have taken it, as Matt will show you in a moment, they've taken a picture of the receipt, and they've uploaded the receipt. So you have a complete report with the expense, with the receipt, and with a running total on who owes who what. So that's that time that took about that $3,000 once again to recreate and then go to court on it is now at your fingertips ready to go. So if you do have to do a reimbursement request, it's, it, uh, it's a it's a no pain point issue. Yeah, that's a great, great example with, you're not gonna call your attorney. Oh, well, you probably have clients that would call you, but you're not gonna make a, a, an issue out of a $40 expense. It's after it's been weeks, months, those $40 expenses have added up and now you're talking about thousands of dollars. At that point, it's an issue. And at that point, you have to go back and collect the receipts if, if they're not already organized in some sort of presentable way. With our family wizard, as long as they're using the expense register to post those receipts and keep that log uh, actively going, it's all there for you. Hopefully you don't need it, but if you do, you can download it easily. And then just to show how an expense is created on our family wizard, this is what it looks like when a parent is doing it from the iPhone. It's pretty simple form, not a lot of fields. They're, they are all required against that. They can't leave out any of the important information. In the first field where it says type, they have two options. They're either requesting reimbursement from the other parent, or they're indicating that this is an expense I'm reimbursing them for. The title is required. The dollar amount is going to be the total dollar amount for that expense because the category is then going to determine the percentage split. So based on what's in their court order or what was agreed to or in the mediation agreement, however they decided or were ordered to split expenses, they can customize their categories on our family wizard as needed. So in this example here, uh, school costs are being split 50-50. So it's a school lunch expense for $80. It's a reimbursement request for $40 because they're splitting it 50-50. Then the purchase date is also required and then indicating which child or which children the expense was for. And then uploading that actual copy of the receipt. If you're on your computer, it's just uploading any saved PDF or any document that you have saved as a file on a computer. But from your smartphone and what most parents are doing uh, is they're taking photos with the camera on their phone. The great thing about that is you don't have to wait till you get home or you maybe you'll forget about it later. If you're at the doctor's office, you have a copay, you can take a picture of it, post it to the Our Family Wizard account right away, and the other side is uh, available. It's available to the other side immediately to view. Well, I think I misspoke a little bit, Matt. I was, I was jumping to OFW pay when I said there's an additional charge. The expense log can be filled in regardless of whether you're actually paying through the account. You can follow yes. your expense. Yeah, so uh, I don't want to misstate that, but you can create the expense log without under your $99 account. If you're gonna be making payments through OFW where it monitors and logs uh, that registration back and forth, it will actually tell you as Matt will get to, it will tell you when, when it was drawn out, the money was drawn out of one account and show you what it was and when it was deposited in another account and keep that running total. But by the party, your client, just entering that information in the log, it will do the same thing. It just won't transfer the money back and forth outside uh, within the system. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, the expense register is included in, in all yeah. our family wizard accounts, including that, that $99 year one. Yes. Um, and then so once an expense gets posted, the other side, get, they get noticed right away, they can see it, they can approve it, or they can refuse it. It's their way of going on record of indicating, yes, I am reimbursing you for this. No, I'm not. They can also indicate how they're going to be reimbursing you. It's either going to be a check or a Venmo or a cash app, however it is that they're transferring money back and forth. And as Kevin mentioned, we do have this new account uh, feature called OFW Pay. It's an extra $45 a year. Um, and only one of the parents, the, the, the parent that's gonna be sending the money would be the one to pay that extra $45 if they chose to, or if it was required. And that actually gives them the ability to transfer money, checking account to checking account through our payment system on our family wizard. That way you, it kind of cuts out a lot of the unnecessary going in and updating. Yes, I received this money as of this day, it's been reimbursed. Uh, the parents that aren't using OFW Pay, though, it's still a great tool because they can keep all their receipts in one place and all of those totals are always calculated as well. The benefit of OFW Pay for certain cases in particular, there's no dispute over when uh, an expense was reimbursed. You're always going to have the timeline that's going to show the date that the funds cleared the bank and when it was actually reconciled. 
Um, and again, Kevin, if you can speak to the importance of timelines with expense disputes uh, and how a tool like Our Family Wizard can help manage the case uh, with that aspect of it. Oh, and just like the other features we've been talking about, it just takes that anxiety out of the case. Uh, uh, again, we've all had clients that I've asked 10 times, they haven't sent the money, but when we can see with the expense histories what's happening, you as the attorney can have yourself or your paralegal or whoever else in your office you've uh, designated the task to go in and see exactly what has happened and 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 see that history see that log and now you know the information maybe your client's mistaken maybe it, it hadn't ha the ch uh, transfer hadn't happened yet but they're just so anxious about it they need something to happen now and they need that information right now this 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 just removes that anxiety yeah, i mean here's an example of a report that can be accessed as well uh this report will actually break down and show how expenses offset to date so even if they're not using OFW pay, it's a great report because you can run this one time and it'll show you based on everything that's been uploaded to the account as of today, one parent owes this parent this much money based on how they offset. And that's the report that you would have if you had your, uh, if you had your reimbursement claim. You just, uh, again, print the report out in the manner that works best for you and then attach it to your pleadings and go to court. So we've and talked about it throughout. Yeah, this is the yeah go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, and well, this is this is really where it ties it together because without the practitioner account, every time you would log into an, uh, through one of the other systems, and again, you could still use uh, one of the other platforms to do some of the same things we're talking about. Not all of the things, because OFW has the uh, broadest and, and, and greatest number of features that are out there. It's it's the best platform that exists um, uh, from my practice and from seeing it from before, from seeing it all the way back from 20 years ago from when they started. Um, they, they've advanced, they, they never stop changing, they never stop innovating, they never stop adding things. But now you can uh, use your pro account and go in and out without, again, without contaminating that data. If someone logged in on the data, it's gonna show your client, It's when your client sends a message, it's going to show it came from your client. When your client receives a message, it's going to say who it, who it was received from. There's no risk that when you view a message through, your, through the pr practitioner account, that it shows that your client has viewed that message. It's not going to show that way. It's only going to show what the clients have done. And so it, it's just such a wonderful tool. And, and what you'll find is if you can do this again and stipulate to this and have your clients use this from both sides, it's going to make the cases start to run smoother. It's going to reduce the conflict. It's going to reduce the anxiety. It's going to reduce the fees and the return trips to court. There's just, there's no question about it. Like literally no question about it. And uh, we've had mediators tell us that they require it on both sides. We've had parenting plans co uh, coordinators tell us they require it from both sides. We've had attorneys say they try to require it and only if the other side will stipulate as well. And then if so, then that helps manage that piece of the case. But my contention and what I'm really trying to encourage is people start to look at not just our family wizard, but what are the other tools in your toolbox that you can start to use to reduce the conflict between the clients and make it run more smoothly. Our system is, it's so hard to get through. It's so frustrating. It, you know, it, it, it's, it's scary. It, it's hard to deal with. And the more family we can take- Family law system. Oh, the family law system. Yeah, no, sorry. Yeah, not OFW. <laughs> but yeah, getting, getting clients to, to the, getting these, the, just these parents and their families out of this conflict, it re, it's what we need to do. That's why we're here. But, it, but, it, but what I found is in, in the practice of this, that we're actually, uh, we don't promote that conflict, but we, we don't help stop it. And so trying to find, when, uh, we, when we did these things with Soberlink as well, it was the same kind of idea, is that that data makes it easier uh, everybody starts to understand, look, I'm, uh, my information can't be changed. I can't lie about this. Um, one of the things I've talked about uh, with Matt is I had a client once, we had a recording that was played in tape and it had a client saying that, uh, that they had, uh, oh, I'll pour acid on your face and they'll never find you again. One client said to the other, one parent said to the other. And the party, my client said, absolutely, that was not me. There's no way I said that. We spent thousands of dollars hiring a voice expert, having him review all the tapes, and it came back and said, oh, that was your client. And at that point, my client said, oh, I guess, yeah, it was me. But all of that process, where if it had been documented and saved in a system, it would have mattered. Uh, but that's the idea is that the, the clients don't try to put things by you because they know that the information is secure. So 
that's that's the one thing. And then in linking with the clients, you'll be able to link with all of the families on, on your account, uh, all the families that you're uh, with. So if you have 10 clients on OFW, you will link your pro account to them. And Matt, explain how the linking works. Yeah, it's pretty simple. It's just first name, last name, email address. So for your client, you would put their first name, last name, email address. You would put the first name and last name for the other parent, but you're not required to ask them for access. And you're not required to provide their email address. That way the notification only goes to your client. Uh, they get noticed that you're requesting to have access. They just click a button to approve it. Uh, vice versa, they can send the request to you as the professional as well. So your client can go into their account and say that I would like Kevin Mooney to have access to my Our Family Wizard account. It's just first name, last name, email. You'll receive an email from info at Our Family Wizard with a link to click that will take you to your account if you have one already, or you can approve that request. If you don't have an account already, you'll have the option to sign up for one if you choose to do so at that time. And as Kevin mentioned, you can be linked up to as many clients as you need to be. So you don't need separate login information for each of your clients. You can go in there and get the information when you need it, um, not necessarily when your client wants you to look at it, but when you know that it's important for you to go in there and access it, you can do so on your own time or designate somebody in your office to have that access to do so. And the client view mode is kind of interesting because you'll be viewing it as your client viewed it. So if you're a husband's attorney, you'll be you'll be seeing the screen as your husband see, as the husband sees the screen. If your wife's attorney, you'll be seeing the screen as the as the wife sees the screen, or mother and father. And that's important because the parties can color code their calendars different. They can put private entries in the system. They can they can upload documents that they make private so the other side doesn't see them or that the other attorney no one else sees them. And they can share those with. Uh, the, uh, with their own attorney if they wish to or with the other side but so you'll know what you're looking at is the same thing your client saw when they went in to view the system and you won't be able to see it unless you're the parenting pan coordinator or potentially the mediator who has dual access you won't be able to see what the other party is is how they're viewing the screen and so there's not a there's not a privacy issue there's not a risk that uh, too much information is going to get out there because it's all controlled within the system Exactly. Yeah. So as an attorney, you just need access for your, your client's side of the account. And as Kevin said, that gives you access to see everything that your client sees. For a neutral practitioner, uh, for example, parenting plan coordinator, or this is also the professional access piece is really important for minors counsel work. Um, you could have access approved by both sides so that you can see it from both parents' point of views. And again, it gives you access to the complete record. All the PDF reports that we've gone over are available to download with that professional access account. And that also allows you, like as the parenting plan coordinator, to help the parents do things together because you can go in there and help them create the calendar. You can go in there and help them with the different issues if you need to. And the next thing that we brought up here was the parenting login histories. And this, again, was one of the ESI issues. It was something that brought that, that metadata forward. And we get to see the IP addresses of the of the. Uh, the device from which the messages were sent. And so, and why is this important? Because those times your client is called and said, or the other side has said, I never sent that message, that wasn't me. And we start having disputes. I think the other side has spoofed my account or logged into my account. And then they sent me a message basically that, that now I'm having to deal with. Well, we can look down the IP addresses and if they're the same as that, what, if, if we have a verified email, and now we say our verified message. And now we say, here's another one from that same IP address that my client is saying they didn't send. Well, I know that they sent it. There's not a chance that they didn't because the IP address again are something that's brought forward so you can see it and you can print out this login history and use it as an attachment on your declaration or your pleadings as you need it. Absolutely. And then just real briefly, we don't need to go into detail on this for time's sake, but we do have a, a business record service where we have an in-house notary. So if you ever did need um, an authenticated record from our family wizard, we can we, we comply with subpoenas. I don't know, Kevin, if you want to touch on this at all, just quickly. Oh, just like I was talking about before, most of the time with the stipulations, you might stipulate that the, the, the uh, information from our family wizard comes into uh, comes into the record uh, subject to cross-examination without objection, something like that. But if if that doesn't happen and they say, well, I'm not going to, I'm not willing to do that in our stipulation, he said, that's okay. If I need to subpoena the records, I can get it. You can get the business record affidavit. And again, this is that time when you can go in the system and look at the data, see how you want it presented and decide how you want those reports to look so that when you get them back from our family wizard with the business record affidavit, it's going to look exactly like you expected it to look and you're going to be ready to go. 
and, and OFW really works with you on the business record side of it too. If you need very specific information presented in a specific way, uh, one of our team members is going to reach out to your office and, and have a conversation with you about what, what it is you're actually trying to, to show with that business record. Yeah, because if they get that subpoena that says all information, there, there is so much information stored in the system. You don't need all the information. You are really interested in one direct string of messages. You are really interested in one uh, check-in information, but you didn't want everything. So, but most of the subpoenas uh, they get at the company right now will say all information. And so what normally will happen is someone from OFW will contact the attorney and say, what did you mean by all? What are you actually looking for? Do you really mean all? If that's what you mean, we'll give you the data dump but don't you have something more specific that you'd rather have? And they'll help you kind of work through that process to make sure that the information you get is what you wanted in a usable form. And saves cost as well. Absolutely. Uh, security, just really quickly for time's sake, uh, we take this very seriously. All data on our family wizard is encrypted, whether it's in motion or, or in rest. So as the information is being transferred, it's encrypted, but also while the accounts are not actively being used, it's all encrypted as well. If anyone wants more detailed specifics on the security, please contact one of us directly. We'd be happy to send you more, more information. One of the questions in the chat was asking if, um, if a judge can mandate that communication be made through the app. Um, short answer is yes. So we see court orders every day from all around the country, specifically Los Angeles County and the surrounding counties in Southern California or are ordering our family wizard on a regular basis. And one of the handouts that's included with your materials is a template for drafting court orders or agreements that include our family wizard. And one of the more important pieces with these, these, this order language is to get specific with it, right, Kevin? Um, yeah. Rather absolutely. than just saying use our family wizard or a, a product like our family wizard. And, and just to that point, I've read literally hundreds, since working with our family wizard, I have gone back and read hundreds of orders from the court uh, uh, up and down California. I pulled them, uh, we, we, we went in and found them and pulled them and most of them said, the party shall communicate through our family wizard, the party shall communicate through talking parents. That's an order that's begging to be, uh, to be violated, it's begging to be broken, it's begging to have a problem. And what I realized is the more specific we can be with these orders, the less chance we have of the order failing. The less chance we have of the order failing, the less chance we have of the court being upset with us, being upset with the parties, being upset with the communication system, whatever it is. So you want to be as clear as possible and put the, if you want the parties using the tone meter, you say the party shall utilize the tone meter. If there's features you, that you don't want them using, you don't include those in the order, but you do make it so that the parties know what they need to do. The court understands what the parties were supposed to do. And then when that doesn't happen, now we actually have a violation of an order that we can deal with and more more probably, we don't have a violation and we don't have a conflict and we don't return to court. That's the more probable answer. Absolutely, and, and, uh, and there's a, uh, a q and A in here saying that the uh, the text is blocked uh, in the template that's in the handouts. On our slide, yes, but if you keep going past the PowerPoint slides, there's an actual PDF, a two-page PDF of this template that you're seeing on the screen here. And again, getting as specific as needed based on the details of your case. Uh, you know, if it's a domestic violence case or a case with a lot of harassment, you know, don't send messages on our family wizard unless it absolutely can't be conveyed by the other features. And we're coming up to one. We were told we had a soft stop at one, but if we needed to, we could uh, take a little bit longer. So I promise not to keep anybody too long here, but um, we got a couple more slides and some questions to answer. Uh, one of those questions was about the fee waiver. So uh, to go into a little bit more detail about the fee waiver, it's a true fee waiver. It's gonna be a completely free account. It includes some of the upgraded features. So tone meter, for example, is included in every fee waiver account. Uh, the question in the chat was asking if the fee waiver um, needs to be renewed on a yearly basis. The answer is yes. So a fee waiver will grant a parent a free our family, family wizard account for one year. Once they're getting close to expiring for that subscription, they can always reapply. And if the same circumstances are there that qualified them in the first place, they'll qualify for a renewal on a fee waiver basis as well. Uh, and one of the things I found statistics here about the number of fee yeah. waivers you've given over the last three years. Sorry, Kev, go ahead. On the fee waiver, one of the things I found very, I was very grateful for is if you're one of the professionals, you can contact our family wizard and say, I have a client in need. I'd like them to have a fee waiver. And they don't have to go through the process of filling out the, the document because you've, you're, you're the verification. You've said this client needs a fee waiver and we will accept that as reality and they'll get the fee waiver without having to show that they're getting a medical or some kind of state aid or they're getting reduced uh, fees. You've, you've uh, authorized it for them 
we will authorize it on your behalf. Yeah, we'll never ask for specific financial information. So if they've already qualified for these other things, they're going to automatically qualify for our fee waiver. But one of the other uh, qualifications is a letter from a professional that they're working with. So if you have a client that you're representing pro bono, all your letter has to say is I'm requesting that you waive the subscription fee for my client due to financial hardship. If it comes from you, that's good enough for our purposes, and we will go ahead and approve that fee waiver. And you can always send fee waivers directly to myself or Kevin. Our contact information is in the handouts, and we have the slide at the end with it, and we can expedite it for you if needed as well. Uh, there's also a military discount, which is essentially a buy one, get one free, for lack of a better term. If one or both parents are former or active military, only one subscription needs to be paid for, and we'll match the second subscription free of charge. I'll kind of skip over these. These are in the handouts. They're, these are appellate decisions where our family wizard was challenged. Uh, the, the lower court's authority to require our family wizard was challenged and it went up to the appellate level. There is some really good language included in here. Uh, for example, our family wizard assists the trial court in supervising its orders and reducing ex excessive litigation to the facilitation of effective communication. So take a look at this. If anyone wants the citations or any more details about some of the other appellate cases we have out there, uh, again, reach out to one of us and we'd be happy to provide that to you. Uh, in this example here, I do like showing this example because one of the parents argued that he was at a disadvantage to use our family wizard uh, because it, would, it was prejudicial uh, towards him. What the upper court decided in their opinion was that our family wizard was essentially a level playing field where one parent didn't have an advantage over the other parent. And we hear that concern on a regular basis where one parent's not as tech savvy as the other. So they're concerned that our family wizard is going to be weaponized against them. I would argue that that parent is much more susceptible to that sort of weaponization outside of our family wizard because it's very easy to manipulate social media, text, emails. Whereas with OFW, you have built-in rules to protect your client from that sort of thing. We are available in Spanish. One of the questions in the chat was asking if Tone Meter was available in Spanish. Unfortunately, it's not. Tone Meter is currently only available in English. But for your clients that are more comfortable speaking Spanish, they can have their entire account in Spanish. We also have a Spanish version of our websites. And with our customer support team, which again is seven days a week by phone or email, they can ask for a Spanish speaking representative as well. We have several representatives that are fluent in Spanish. But this number, I can't emphasize enough how valuable the resource this is for your clients. They will walk them through not only how to recover their password if they forgot it, but they'll also walk them through step-by-step step how to create their parenting schedule on the calendar. So if you have that client that isn't as confident in their technical ability or is nervous that they're gonna make a mistake, they can call and talk to one of our representatives who will walk them through step-by-step step how to do what it is they're trying to do. And I can't overstate how valuable that seven-day-a-week issue is because some of the apps have a 48-hour email response time. Some of them only have email responses back and forth. And again, it's the anxiety that the clients have that caused the, them to get keyed up that create the conflict that we can't overcome. And so how do we remove that anxiety? We get them fast answers. How do they get fast answers? They put their information in the system so it's at their fingerprints, at fingertips. How do they get fast answers? They call the support line and get an immediate answer for their question without having to contact your office. And they can move forward without that anxiety and without it increasing and without it becoming a court, uh, a visitation type issue where you're going back to court. And I know we're at time, but we're just going to take a couple of minutes for those who can stay on to, to address the questions that came up in the chat and the Q&A. Um, another tone meter question is, is it automatically included in all subscriptions? It's not included in the $99 a year. You can add it on for an additional $10 a year. It is included in all of the premium subscriptions. So for the $100 a year subscription, it's an extra $10 to add tone meter to it. Tone meter is included in all fee waiver accounts, though. Um, and then... Uh, Kevin, what if a parent tries to avoid documenting numerous change requests by only calling with the request? Essentially, how do you address a parent communicating outside of our family wizard? Oh, we, I think that goes back to the order language, right? It goes back to the, it goes back to the order language, absolutely. And, and if a, a parent keeps violating that, that might be an issue you need to bring before the court because it's taking it outside that system that is created to help them. And so they're, they're trying to... Uh, uh, skirt that and we, we just take it back from them, you know, if, if, if necessary. The one question is, are, are there any training videos on the product? There are training videos and there are uh, uh, walkthroughs. And, but again, uh, you can get a private tutorial for your office. You can get a tutorial, your clients can get a tutorial. You can have a tutorial for a, a group of people, whatever it is, uh, yes. The answer is yes, there are training videos. And the bigger, but, but the, the better answer is call that helpline have it on speed dial. You don't have to, you don't have to look for anything. You just get the answer. 
Yeah, and for your clients, uh, you know, if for your clients that maybe want to see some video tutorials to kind of get an introduction to our family wizard, those are also available on our website. We'll have a follow up email coming up in the, in the next few days and we'll be sure to include that video tutorial link as well. There's basically a three minute video that kind of goes through all of the different features that are available for parents that will give your clients a really good understanding of what it is that they're getting into. And give them a really um, good overview to get a good understanding, exactly. then, then they'll contact the support line and they'll help them work that through. Or, or, here's, here's a good question. I, I have clients who are using talking parents and are resistant to move over to OFW because they will lose the record of years of interactions between the co-parents. They don't want to pay the $100 fee that talking parents charges to provide a copy of the records, which is true. Talking parents is going to charge your client to, to print those records. Any suggestions on an easy way to transfer the talking parent records to OFW so the history of communication remains intact? Kevin, what would you do if that was your client? Well, um, I, I I don't know about talking parents, but our OFW retains all those records forever. So you can always get back to, you don't lose the old communications by switching platforms. And I believe talking parents is the same, but I can't speak for them. Um, and it's one of so the maybe things- to, to the question though, you can always, if you have records from a previous means of communication, like whether it's talking parents or WhatsApp or any, any other thing that's been saved, you can sure. always upload that to the information bank. That oh, way it's oh, then on the Our Family Wizard account. Yeah, you can do it that way, but but I know with with our family wizard. So when your parents, let's say you know, you're all done with their case, they use it for another six months, and they say, "Hey, look, we're getting along fine. Let's stop using this," and they stop using it, and then two years later, they're back in in court. But they say that was really important. What happened back in that old information? Uh, they can get back to our family wizard and still retrieve that old information. That it, it it's never deleted. It's it's retained forever. So that's one of the advantages. But Matt is correct. Yeah, you could upload it. Uh, it's not going to be as as searchable or as easy to deal with after that, but you could you could actually upload it into the system. But at least you know it's saved in a yes. place that will be sure. on record forever and, and always be able to be accessed if need be. And then Correct. the last question here, uh, what is the difference between the $99 subscription and the premium subscription? So $99 gives you access to all the features we went through except tone meter and except the ability to pay each other. Uh, the next step up is $144 a year. That well, includes the next step tone up is, meter. The next step up is $10 more just to add tone meter. And then the next Correct. step up is, yeah. Yeah, yeah so you could add tone meter uh, as an a la carte feature, essentially, where it's an extra $10. That's prorated as well. So if there's six months into their subscription, it's $5 for the rest of the year. Um, but then there's a couple of packages that can be upgraded to. And the, the middle tier is $144 a year. That includes all the features, tone meter, uh, additional storage space, and the ability to actually make payments to pay each other through OFW. And then there's a, a, an, another tier above that, which essentially includes all of those things. Um, and then uh, additional uh, storage space and uh, a free um, uh, business records as well included with that one. All right. And, and so I think, I think we're, we're probably good. I, I, want to thank done, you guys. Yeah. I want to thank you for having us, but I really wanted to encourage everybody to start trying to find ways, whatever the, the things that you already have at your fingertips, whatever those processes are the programs you, ha you, you have available to you, like the, the uh, co-parenting platforms, find ways to utilize those to help your clients become better parents, to become less conflict oriented, to stop returning to court and to keep the kids out of these conflicts. That's what our family wizard's goal is. I know it's what most of your goals are. So if we can find a way to make that happen, that's what we should be doing. And then just real quick, there's a question in the Q&A, does a lawyer have to buy the platform? No, it's no. For, for your professional access, it's completely free. There's never a cost for you to have access to your clients. For your clients, they would either need to pay for a, a, a one-year subscription or have a fee waiver-based subscription. But for you as the professional, there's no cost to you. Absolutely. And again, this is our contact information. Don't hesitate to reach out to either one of us if you'd like additional information or more uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one or, or group training for your office. Please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you all for, for joining and, and listening to our presentation. And thank you to the Beverly Hills Bar for having us. Yeah.